is actually a very precise choice from Allah of you and me. There were plenty of other human beings available before Allah on this planet. And Allah chose precisely you and me to be Muslim for a task that He has. So now, you are, we aren't just chosen to be Muslim, we're chosen to be Muslim because we have a mission in front of us. And that mission he already describes is you have to struggle for Allah as is worthy of the struggle that should be made for Him. هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ وَمَا And then he, then he adds finally, now that I realize I've been chosen, even though I've been chosen, I, I'm still thinking that this is too hard of a job. How am I going to do this? Fine, Allah sees something in me, I don't even see it in myself. I don't even see what's so special about me. Why did I get chosen? You know, there's so many better people out there. But Allah is, and this is too hard anyway. Islam is way too hard. What Allah is asking of me is too much. I can't do it. And what are the next words from Allah Himself? وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حرج. He did not place for you in the religion any difficulty, any discomfort, any tightness whatsoever. In other words, this is Allah Himself telling you, relax, I'll make it easy. Don't you worry about that. You're the right man for the job. You're the right woman for the job. You were the one chosen for this time, this day, and this age. I'm not here to know your secrets, but know one thing. When you decide to struggle away from the way of shaitan and towards Allah, Allah's help is constantly there. He does not abandon you. We think He abandons us. Shaitan comes and tells us, you're so messed up. Allah, never, Allah doesn't like you. He's gonna burn you in hell, etc., etc. He wants you to lose connection with Allah. And Allah comes along and says, no. Allah is there when you turn to Him. He's going to be there and He's going to constantly be there to provide His support. I'll take you back to the analogy I gave you in the beginning. There's that job interview and the guy gave you an impossible job description and you're sitting there thinking there's no way I'll get hired and then he hires you. And your first thought is, I'm not qualified. And he says, relax, I know what I'm doing. I've been hiring for a long time. I see something in you. Even if you don't think you know, you'll learn pretty quickly. You know, I, I know talent when I see it. So he's encouraging you and he's acknowledging you in a way that you didn't even think you saw in yourself. The other thing that's happening here is every Muslim is supposed to see value in themselves. No believer can think that they're useless before Allah. That they're pointless, that they're meaningless before Allah. They're worthless. They are worthy of Allah. They're worthy because Allah made a special choice of them. A special choice of them. And it's not gonna be hard whatsoever. So now I take a breath of relief. Okay, Whew. it's not gonna be hard. He says, relax, and let me tell you something, you're not the first one to have this job. Many have been given this job before you. So he makes reference to the fact that this religion isn't just a new religion, it's a legacy. And whose legacy does he mention? In that same ayah, as the ayah continues, وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ You are the continuation of the legacy of your father, Ibrahim. He reminds us of which Prophet? Ibrahim alayhi salam. If you think about Ibrahim alayhi salam, the last thing that comes on your mind is easy. He has to leave his family in the middle of a desert and walk away. That's not easy. Before that as a young man, he has to challenge his father and the entire community. That's not easy. He has to be thrown into a harriqu wa suru ali hatakum. So burn him alive, he has to be thrown into a fire because he believes in Islam. That doesn't sound like easy. When he gets, finally gets older, and now his son is old enough that he can run around, بلغ, بلغ he gets old enough to run around with his son, he sees a dream that he's slaughtering his son. Over and over and over again, he gets trials and challenges that no human being has ever faced. Allah has never asked a human being to abandon their family, Allah has never asked a human being to j jump into a fire. Allah has never asked a human being to slaughter their own child. <laughs> He's been asked to do things that nobody was ever asked. The hardest test you can think of. This is even described in the Quran. When Ibrahim was, especially Ibrahim was tested. Like nobody else by his master. There's ikhtisas there. Like Ibrahim السلام, had the hardest, hardest, hardest tests. And Allah in this ayah, when He told you and me, by the way, relax. It's gonna be easy. Islam's gonna be no problem. By the way, you're on the same track as your father Ibrahim. That's not very comforting. 
Because that man did not have easy tests. So how am I supposed to be relaxed now? For a second he told me things are going to be easy, now he's kind of telling me things are going to be difficult again. But actually he's not. He's giving the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam for a very beautiful reason. He's giving that example because Allah is saying, if Allah can make jumping into a fire easy, if Allah can make leaving your family in the middle of a desert easy, if Allah can make you the only young man who stands up not only to his father, but to an entire community easy, if Allah can make you stand up to Nimrud and challenge him directly easy, if Allah can make you take a knife and put it on your child's neck before, because Allah commanded it, if Allah can make that easy for him, then what is he asking you? He didn't ask that from you. He asked much less from you. You know, it's actually, all he asked you was to stay away from filthy things and made the good and pure things halal for you and mandated a few salihat, just do these few good things and stay away from these few bad things. That's it, that's all he asked. So we are being told by the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam, no matter what difficulty you have, you will never be able to compare your difficulty to the difficulty Ibrahim was put in alayhi salam. And even Allah can make that easy. So you have no reason to wonder or ever question that Allah will make ease for you. Millata abikum Ibrahim. And he is the one who asammakum al muslimin. And then, then he gave us the secret ingredient, didn't he? He is the one who named you Muslims. Mufassirun have looked at this ayah two ways. Maybe it's Ibrahim alayhi salam who named us Muslims, which is an indication in the Quran, or Allah Himself named us Muslim. Either way, it makes sense because Ibrahim is a messenger of Allah. So even if he named, it's actually on behalf of Allah Azza wa Jal Himself. Regardless, what does the word Muslim mean? The one who gives up, the one who just accepts. It comes from Salima, to be at, to, to be at peace, to be at ease and calm. And when you say Aslama, to submit, actually means to submit calmly. You're, you're okay with it. When Allah tells you to do something, you're not agitated about it. You're not like, fine, I'll do it. You're not like that. You're at ease on the inside and you just willingly submit yourself. If it's Allah saying it, it must be good for me. No matter what my mind says, no matter what my family says, no matter what my friends say, no matter what society says, when Allah told me this is better for me, I am at ease. If you can do that, if you can get to that point, then you are the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Calling yourself and myself Muslim is easy. Being Muslim is not, a, it's a different thing altogether. And it's not even about behavior. It's about something very deep internally. I am completely satisfied with what Allah and His Messenger command. I'm, at, I'm comfortable with it. And I'm at ease with it. And I'm at peace with the fact that I'm obeying Allah. I'm not thinking that if I obey Allah, I'm gonna miss out on something. Because you know, He's asking me to stay away from these pleasures or these opportunities because they're haram. And if I stay away from them, I'll be the one at loss. No, I'm at ease that there's no way anybody ever obeys Allah and they're at loss. That is never a thought that crosses my mind. That is, he named you people Muslims, the ones who submit completely before Allah, the ones who are at ease, the one who come with comfort before Allah. That's the comfort you and I want to find before Allah. And I sincerely pray that especially our young generation finds that comfort with Allah, that they're not, they're not agitated by the commandments of our deen. That our young, young girls, when they're thinking about wearing hijab, they're not annoyed by it. You know, and they're not, oh, why do I have to wear this? Or our young men aren't agitated by the idea that they have to pray early in the morning. Why do I have to get up at this time? Why can't I just pray later? You know, it's so annoying. This, this attitude is actually the antithesis of Islam itself. You can't have that attitude in Islam. Islam means you gave it up, you gave up. You accepted it completely. And so Allah says, فَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَةَ وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِاللَّهِ This is all one ayah. From where I started, all of this is just one ayah. The last ayah of Surah Al-Hajj. He says, establish the prayer and give zakat. Establish the prayer and give zakat is actually a beautiful expression in the Qur'an for many things. Not just the establishment of prayer like we're doing and may Allah accept our prayer. But actually, they're connected to each other. When the prayer, and in many ways, I'll just highlight one thing. When you establish the prayer, that means you pray together. That's what that means. And when you pray together, you get to know each other. And when you get to know each other, you find the ones among you who have needs. You figure out who's in need and who's do, not doing well and who's sick and who's you know, unwell and who's you know, having difficulty in life. And then you find out who should you give zakat to. They're connected to each other. Establish prayer and give zakat. Because establishing prayer builds the hearts closer to each other. 
before Allah. And then you purify your wealth by taking care of those in need among you. فَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِاللَّهِ and Hold on to Allah. That amazing phrase at the end, hold on to Allah, is the last thing I'll explain and I'm done. When Allah says, hold on to Allah, اعتصام actually means to hold on to something that if you let go, you'll die. Hold on tight. For isma, isma means protection. اعتصام is to hold on for protection. Like imagine if you fell off of a boat or a, or a ship or something, and the only thing you're holding on to is the rope or the anchor. If you let go of it, you're done. Allah says, hold on to Allah for dear life. You know what that means, right? That means if my, the people around me abandoned me, if the people that were around you, that you were practicing deen because your friends were religious, and you were in a good environment, now you're in college, and you're the only Muslim there, you're like, man, my friends aren't there anymore, so I don't feel so inclined towards Islam anymore, I don't really feel like praying anymore, I don't really feel like, you know, that I don't have that connection anymore. No, no, no. Whether people hold on to you or not, whether the support system is there or not, this is why we're the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He, he, that young man held on to his religion, and he was the only one holding on to his religion. There was no support around him. His family didn't support him, his society didn't support him. He's a one-man nation. That's why Allah calls him an ummah by himself. A nation by himself. And we are his following. You know what that means? That we don't make the excuse that the environment around us is bad. And that's why we don't submit to Allah. That our friends are messed up. And that's why we're messed up. That man, you don't know what my crowd is like. Who cares what your crowd is like? You're the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. You're the only light in the middle of all the darkness. You don't make the excuses. You're there to get rid of darkness, not to be part of it. That's, the, that's your function. And so you hold on to Allah. Because everything else will come and go. Everything else will come and go. وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِاللَّهِ هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ He is your protective friend. He is your security. He is the one that's gonna guard you. فَنِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّصِيرِ What an incredible protection he, he is. I'm not here to know your secrets, but know one thing. When you decide to struggle away from the way of shaitan and towards Allah, Allah's help is constantly there. He does not abandon you. We think He abandons us. Shaitan comes and tells us, you're so messed up. Allah, never, Allah doesn't like you. He's gonna burn you in hell, etc., etc. He wants you to lose connection with Allah. And Allah comes along and says, no. Allah is there when you turn to Him. He's going to be there and He's going to constantly be there to provide us support. May Allah Azza wa never let us lose hope in our Master and in our Rabb. May Allah Azza wa make our personal struggles and our deen easy for all of us and make us of those for whom Allah is Ni'mal Mawla and Ni'mal Nasir.